a bracket X. What's the inverse of three? At Boston University Five. every summer, Five. Glenn Five. Stevens plays host to dozens of promising okay. students. Most are young, very smart one. high school kids. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, um, so let's just examine this. Um, but Do some in the audience are older. Some are school mathematics teachers learning what it's like to be students again. Today, struggling with advanced number theory. I'm gonna put question mark. The idea was to give teachers the same intense mathematical experience that the high school students were getting when they came to BU in the summertime. Immerse them in a small area of mathematics where they were constantly working on problems all day long. Um, and they got to experience what it's like to work as a mathematician. Okay, uh, how many people think my question is ridiculous? <laughs> That's fine too. That's fine. You don't have to ask these particular questions. Was the question for the next six weeks? You'll probably be doing more mathematics than you've ever done before, um, more intensely and almost living mathematics constantly. In the mornings you get up and you're doing mathematics in your head. At night you go to bed and you might have dreams about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. If that happens. That's great. That's the way it's supposed to be. Welcome to Promise for Teachers, a program started out of concern that school math teaching had become a distortion of true mathematics, more focused on rules than on exploration, experimentation, invention, and discovery. We don't want students to just be able to solve problems they've seen before, right? That's a boring way to approach education and it's a ridiculous way to approach life. Um, we want them to be able to deal with the unexpected. Mm -hmm. If I encounter a problem and I don't know what to do, what do I do? <laughs> the answer is struggle. Wrestle with the ideas, examine concrete examples, and connect new concepts to things you already know. I think those of us who teach enjoy helping people, and it's hard to just let them struggle. But we try to, when they ask a question, ask them a question. Because what's that? Is that this? No. It's, what is it's it? this. It's three. Uh, you're in base three? I'm in base ten. Uh, seven. You're in base seven. So how many is it? Well, I don't understand that. What do you mean, how many is it? Well, how many fingers is that? In base seven, it's, it's, uh, wait, hold on, I got this, uh, 13, three, <laughs> I don't have it. And it requires this being able to see the germ of an idea. There's always a germ of an idea there that's correct. Mathematics is something that's very real. It's something that one can fiddle with, uh, that you can play games with. Whereas I think the tradition in schools is more to teach mathematics as a set of rules. You can learn rules, uh, but they, they, they don't have a lot of meaning to people. And we see this problem always with students that they, if you give them a problem posed in exactly the way that it was posed in their textbook, they can probably do it. But if you change the parameters a little bit or word it from a different angle, now all of a sudden they seem lost, and to a mathematician this just seems odd. So in 2004, with support from the National Science Foundation, a project called Focus on Mathematics was launched to extend Promise's reach. The aim? To place mathematics at the center of professional development in school mathematics programs. In a partnership involving Boston University, Education Development Center, Leslie University, and five Massachusetts school districts focus on mathematics offer select teachers a chance to spend two years both deepening their own mathematical abilities and passing on this culture of mathematics learning to their schools. Among this year's cohort are Kittery Wagner of Watertown, Matt Chedester of Waltham, and Robert Weldon from Lawrence. There are times here where I'm completely lost. It's like there's days when you're just like, whoa, this is all gone right over my head. Wait a minute, slow down, say that again, or, you know, get completely lost. And so that's a good thing to remember how it feels to be confused and lost because 
you're going to have students that are. I mean, hey, recognize that, but now I'm sort of more in contact with it. After six weeks of intensive mathematics, Bob, Kittery, and Matt continue teaching high school. They must now apply what they've learned in their classrooms. A lot of these kids are in 10th grade that haven't got the strong background, and so there's a lot of things to cover. You know, that's not enough. Messed up. All right, if you're going to take this whole line, you have to take everything? No. No. Well, they have to take these separate rows. Yeah, you lose. Remember, the rows go this way and that way. So there's a conflict of trying to figure out what to spend your time on. You only have, you know, between September and May to work on whatever you're going to cover. And you have a curriculum, and there's, there's lots of good problems. And that's the real conflict. It's trying to get these kids who may not have the background they ought to have up to snuff so they can pass the test. I think you'll be fine. No, I think you'll be fine. You're gonna, towards the end, you're going to run out of paper. But that's all right. Just get as many as you can on the paper. Bob's experience engaging in rich mathematics should help him solve this problem. A teacher who understands curriculum topics deeply can make informed decisions to target instruction and thereby use limited classroom time more efficiently. Could you, could you turn that into a graph? Um, I teach at Watertown High School. I teach all grades, 9 through 12. Algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, algebra 2, pretty much the whole gamut. What's up? Um, Make a dotted line, and I shade that. And I've definitely seen in my teaching that if a student asks a question, I'm too quick to say, oh, well, just go that way. And I think that from this, I've definitely taken that that's not the way to do it, because they're not learning anything by me saying, oh, just go that way. They need me to say, well, well, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. And from there, they look at that and find that, and off they go. One of the things I hear from students a lot is that they say math is boring. I mean, I can see where they're coming from. It's listening to a teacher talk at the board and then repeating the process doesn't always give a lot of excitement. So my roots before, what's my other root? No, I said two because I was on. A common thing when students get a problem that they haven't seen before, their, their general tendency is to throw up their hands and say, you know, we've never done this before, we can't do it. And what my hope is is that to get a situation where students would have the toolkit there, and they can say, well, we haven't done this before, but I know we have these ideas and work those ideas into solving new, new problems and giving them a challenge that they can handle and come up with like an empowerment set. After school hours, the focus on mathematics teachers continue deepening their mathematical knowledge through seminars and study groups. This is going to be a one, this is going to be a one, and this is going to so be So we developed these ideas of study groups, which I think have been the, one of the biggest successes of, of the focus on math, where mathematicians and teachers work together on mathematics in the schools after school uh, for a couple hours twice a month. And those have been, those have had the biggest reach, I think. Some study groups are, are up around 20 people, and they come faithfully to these things. For each possible part of the integer, there were two choices, to cut or not to cut. So thus, we have powers of two. So what about the exponent? Focus on mathematics teachers also attend colloquia, some of which involve presenting an original research project to an audience of teachers and mathematicians. As you can see from this diagram, the number of possible compositions grows exponentially with They were very, very confident of their own mathematical skill. When you bring cultures together that are devoted to the same end or the same interest, like mathematics, you get insights that you don't usually get by keeping the culture separate. And I promised in my flyer that I would mention how I brought this into my class. I actually had the kids work on my homeroom and this one other homeroom. They actually did work on um, how many vertices, how many edges, how many faces in a point, a line, a square, a cube, and then a hypercube. So those two classes did have a chance to play with it, and they were fascinated by it, something that's really great. So that when you bring teachers and mathematicians together in a bigger mathematical community, um, you're gonna lead, it's going to lead to more effective teaching and more effective mathematics and more uh, kind of connections between 
School mathematics and mathematics is a scientific discipline. So what does 7.21 stand for? For, was it the area that we were in? No, what you found, oops, I'm sorry, Melissa. You found this tag here. Kit, Bob, and Matt have immersed themselves in rich mathematics. They've experienced the struggle of figuring something out. They've become more confident mathematicians. And as a consequence, they're now more effective classroom teachers. But can they spread this vision of mathematics throughout their schools, and will student scores improve as a result? As an early test, the authors of Focus on Mathematics proposed a bold challenge to the school kids to research and present an original mathematics project. It's called the Math Expo. First, teachers try it out themselves, researching, designing, and presenting sample math expo projects in consultation with mathematicians. Never listen to me. No, on the rough draft, you guys can keep this sheet for your guys' work. This is gonna be exciting. I think we can even cut yeah, you this off. Cut, cut this if you need to. Oh, it's good, but I might just write experimentation. Perfect. Do you the marker? Okay, we should shrink that and put that right there. You want to, okay, I'll bring well, it Well, i tell you what, Mike, you want to do what you could do is you could just attach it to the bottom, too, if you wanted to. Like, I just got to put some glue I could shrink it. it. You want to, well, okay, you got about three minutes. Left. So the first part of the process was experimentation, where we just we tried it with four discs and we saw and um, and you know we we were able to generate the pattern that one disc is one move and two discs is three moves etc cetera, etc cetera. and that for n discs it's always one less than wait okay. that's not right yeah, we were looking at um, we started thinking about the center of mass of Massachusetts as far as where the center of mass was we changed into thinking about where the center of the population of Massachusetts was and um, so we one of the first questions we started with was how are we going to measure this population wise and we broke it down by counties taking the different counties of Massachusetts and uh, Tom and Mike went on to the web and found out the population of Now it's the students turn That is beautifully I, uh, I did which of the best statistics in baseball to decide what's the best player or what's the best team and I pretty much compare. Remarkably, uh, despite the busy school teachers. schedule, many teachers find time to help students plan their projects. So I picked Manny and Hiroki Matsui, and I compared their batting averages. And Manny's is how fast rabbits can breed. Cool. So then this, these five pairs will make eight pairs? Make eight pairs, yeah. Right, and then that eight will make? We'll make uh, 13 pairs. We one for each roll I use. So which one's going to be cheaper, easier? And they yeah, D. So you're going to need to cut 15 rolls in that pattern. Okay. And what happened? What then? Each school district hosts math expos for middle and high school kids where students defend their projects before professional mathematicians. Here I took 26 pitchers from the Red Sox team and the 28 pitchers from the Yankees team from 2005. I took the averages of the team, that's the Red Sox, yep. 7.56, and this is the Yankees, 8.55. Okay. And by taking the average distance from each city to each possible location, um, it's grown in leaps and bounds. I mean, uh, we can't keep up. Do they tend to keep more statistics for hockey than for baseball or vice versa? Well, I wouldn't say there's, there's more statistics. There's an equal amount. All right. but there are different things that they, right. they categorize in each game. There are hundreds and hundreds of kids doing mathematics research projects now in the schools. Um, projects that um, they design in collaboration with teachers and mathematicians and that they work on them themselves. Not only is the number of, of, of expo projects increased, but the kind of projects that the kids are working on has really changed. The judges spend hours deliberating. The girls are very knowledgeable. Yeah. Speaking about it, yes. Okay, so I, I've got to mark that then. The measurement, so, the geometry. Yeah, so that's a big thing they have to hit. So. Yeah. I mean, she seems to me to sort of be a budding 
architect or something or designer. <laughs> well, I mean, she fun. had layouts. I mean, she had well, plans. That's fun. She well, had two that's... bathrooms in the distribution center. Right? <laughs> well, well, she had thought of so everything. I was like, wow. Yeah, all right. Right. He, 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 he needs to make some corrections. Yeah, he, he, he but finally, he, they yeah. settle on a group of projects here, to be showcased at the Boston Museum of Science. Do you have air conditioning or not? No. I well, just, that's why, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't have any either. Well, the project's name is The Area of Your Bellows, The Similarities of Semicircles. And we're here to find the area of this space shaded here, which is called the Arbellos. And our project is called the Frog Log. And basically, it's about frogs usually sit on a log, usually, when they're um, in waterfalls or everything. So what we came up with was there's five frogs on each side of the log. And what they're trying to do is these five groups of brown frogs are trying to come to this side and the green frogs are trying to move to the other side. The math expos that we saw um, this past June, the projects that the students put together, some of them were, were really quite amazingly creative. My name is Jonathan Hessian and I did a project which statistics are the best predictors in baseball and I compared the Red Sox, the best team. Um, and um, were put together in the spirit of what we do here on the Promise program. I got the idea because um, I like riding the subway and I thought to do a project on the subway to find the longest distance between any stops that's direct would be a really interesting question. So I actually, um, I went online to find that's how I got the uh, actual distances between stops and calculated it out and made a scale and did the spreadsheets and then actually did the experiment. The enthusiasm is palpable. The projects are ambitious. But will this energy translate into better math scores? Formal assessment of focus on mathematics is underway. It's a long-term approach, right? I mean, you're not going to get MCAS scores to go up tomorrow. But our belief is that you'll get, you'll, in the long run, you'll increase student achievement. The ideas that I would like to see sustained around the country are this notion that teachers and educators and mathematicians and even students are part of a bigger mathematical community where everybody has something to contribute. That um, putting mathematics at the core of your professional development leads to effective teaching and that teachers um, need to drive professional development in their own schools. They have, be, they have to be mathematically expert resources. We hope that they'll think about mathematics as a living science, something that you can experience, something that's real, um, and that they'll uh, pass that experience on to their students. Focus on Mathematics is funded by the National Science Foundation under grant number EHR 0314692.